Isaac? Yes. People lie. Actions don't. Words, members of the jury, are illusory. They can create a false narrative, but actions are factual. What the defendant said and what she did are two very different things. Because her words made her look just like you and me. But her actions threatened to harm the security of each and every American citizen. Today, I've heard the story of Parker Oswald. The defense focused on her words, but the prosecution showed you her actions. You heard how he, she and her husband moved across the country to target American cartographer Dr. Petit. You learned how they planned to steal a classified document. And on July 9, 2016, that's exactly what they did. They took that document and transmitted it to Russian agent Anya Lima. Now, in today's case, the prosecution bears the burden of proof. We have to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt that Mrs. Osborne transmitted classified defense information to a foreign agent and had reason to believe her actions would harm the United States. Now, members of the jury, let us be clear on the reason to believe. We don't have to prove that she wanted to harm the U.S., and we don't have to prove that she was aware of each and every step she took. We just have to prove that she had a reason to believe that she would harm the U.S. And members of the jury, the people have met our burden. We've shown that first, Mrs. Osborne joined the program. Second, she targeted Dr. Petit. And third, transmitted classified information. First, Mrs. Osborne joined the program. Sasha Levin, or Sonny Osborne, took the stand and told you how Mrs. Osborne got involved in today's case. They told you how her involvement dates back to 1998. You heard how she contacted the Russian government, how she contacted the Russian government, and that the SBR arranged their marriage. And you heard how they became spies in 1999. You learn that Mr. Osborne and Mrs. Osborne moved to the United States in order to carry out their work for the SBR. And members of the jury, you learn that members of the illegals program were targeting a man named Dr. Barton Petit. What did we hear from Mr. Osborne? That that's exactly what they were doing in the United States. Second, Mr. Osborne targeted Dr. Petit. Now, members of the jury, you heard from Corey Osborne that her parents have been talking about Dr. Petit for years. You've heard from, you've heard from Corey that in 2015, Mrs. Osborne moved across the country to take a job as a secretary. Sonny Osborne told you the reason they took that job. He told you that they took that job to, to target Dr. Petit. He told you they took that job to gain confidential information. Members of the jury, Mrs. Osborne, took that job for one reason. She told everyone she moved for cheaper education, but she moved to gain that information. She lied about why she moved, but her actions did not. And third, Mrs. Osborne transmitted classified information. Agent Carlisle told you and showed you the events on the day in question. You learned how Mrs. Osborne put a report in the coloring book. Opposing counsel hasn't offered any evidence to suggest that she didn't put that report in there. Next, Mrs. Osborne went to the park. She put the coloring book on the bench with a 20-page classified report inside. And you heard Sonny Osborne tell you that she knew exactly what would happen next. She knew that Anya Levov would pick that report up. Members of the jury, that's exactly what happened next. Mrs. Osborne may try to lie about her involvement in today's case, but her actions do not. They cannot. Members of the jury, the fact that she put that report on the bench, that is undisputed. Now, in the past few years, it's become obvious that there are countries that wish to harm the United States. Countries like Russia seek to use spy to, spies to undermine our democratic institutions, but members of the jury, spies aren't easily recognizable anymore. They don't look like James Bond. They're not the cloak and dagger men of the Cold War. Spies today look just like you and me. Thrive on 
secrecy. Thrive on lies. People lie. Spies lie. Parker Osborne lied. She lied to the FBI. She lied to her daughter. And members of the jury, she is lying to you. Look past her lies. We ask you to judge her based on her actions. Find Mrs. Osborne guilty of espionage. Thank you. Before presenting closing argument, may I deconstruct opposing counsel to demonstrate? That's fine. Thank Today you heard a phone call. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. A man's voice. Mr. Levin's voice. He's setting up the dead drop. He's been planning this for years. But now we're after this phone call is made, it's not Mr. Levin who walks out that door. It's his wife. She's making the drop. She's the one who's gone. And today, the question we asked you was why? Members of the jury, you've heard witness after witness, seen all the evidence. The answer is clear. Sasha Levin was a spy. And to him, his wife was expendable. Now the prosecution just got up here and told you, oh, she knew she was a spy too. She was involved in it from the beginning. But what happens after nine o'clock tells a different story. Now, the dead drop is completed. The Russian agent has the book in hand, has the documents. But the FBI closes it, and she knows her cover is blown. She sends a text to her accomplice, run, run, Sasha. He runs. Ms. Osborne isn't told to run. She's not told that her cover as a fellow spy is blown. That's because she isn't a spy. She doesn't know anything. She's been played. She was expendable. Now today, the prosecution had the burden of proof. They have to meet every element of their burden beyond a reasonable doubt. They have to prove that Ms. Osborne knew what she was doing, and there are no other even reasonable explanations. Members of the jury, they failed to meet that burden. I'm going to walk you through the evidence we heard today and show you why. Now, both parties agree that Sasha Levin is a spy. You heard him tell us that. In fact, you heard him tell us that he was the one who accessed that document in the first place. He was the one who downloaded it. He was the one who printed it. It was him who had the plan all along. But they failed to prove it was Osborne's spy. Now, opposing counsel tried as hard as she could to tell you. She called Sasha Levin and got him to say that on the stand. But I want you to remember what Sasha Levin admitted to today. He's here on a plea deal. You heard him say that the, F, that the government suggested he testify today. Maybe they can take him from a death penalty only 12, maybe even seven years in prison. You heard today that Sasha Levin wasn't there to protect his wife on July 9th. He never warned her, didn't tell her anything. 
He's certainly not here to protect her today. From the beginning, this is about Sasha Levin finishing his plan, protecting himself. That's why Ms. Osborne was here today in the first place. I tried to tell you that Ms. Osborne put the document in the book. Members of the jury, I want you to remember that the FBI agent told you on cross-examination. Not only did they find no actual evidence supporting Mr. Levin's words that she was involved in the Russian spy ring, not only did they find no evidence of this plan that Sasha Levin said that Ms. Osborne was involved in, they heard no evidence that she even held that document. Now, Sasha Levin told you again and again, my wife put it in the book. She knew it was there. Members of the jury, I want you to remember this document, FBI Analyst Report. Last sentence, Exhibit 10, that document we heard about, contains no fingerprints, no DNA. That classified document opposing counsel's talked so much about had nothing connecting her, Ms. Osborne, to it. Opposing counsel hasn't even shown you this actual document. She's talked all about it. She's shown you pictures of it hidden inside a book. Where is it, members of the jury? Where is this supposed classified document that's so incriminating that's putting Ms. Osborne on the stand today? Opposing counsel never brought it up. Never admitted it. Never showed it to you. Members of the jury, with all of this lack of evidence, prosecutions failed to meet their burden. Beyond a reasonable doubt, members of the jury, they haven't even come close to that. So what do the facts say? On July 9, 2016, just like he told you, Sasha Levin got the document. He is the one who places it in that book. He sets up the dead drop. He tells that no Russian spy when to pick it up. But he's been in contact with her members of the jury. He's the one who's been seen with her again and again and again, not as often. It's too dangerous for him to do it. So he sends his unknown wife instead. Let her take the fall. Because he's a spy. But she's expendable. Members of the jury, the evidence is clear. I ask that you find Ms. Osborne not guilty. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, how much time remains for a vote? Ms. Melcote has one minute and 28 seconds. Yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? You may. Ms. Shepard's right. He was a spy. But so was she. Members of the jury, Miss Shepard tried to tell you that Mrs. Osborne didn't know anything. She didn't know anything. Let's go through what she knew. Sonny Osborne took the stand and told you that she put the report in the book. He told you that she went to the SVR, that she was an agent of Russia. He told you that she moved across the country to target Dr. Petit, that she took the job. You heard that she was the one who committed this dead drop. Ms. Shepard tried to tell you that because he, she didn't download the file, that she didn't have reason to believe it would harm the U.S., but who left the house on the day in question? Parker Osborne. Who carried out the dead drop? Parker Osborne. Who knew a Russian agent would pick the document up? That's Parker Osborne. Members of the jury, the prosecution has shown you that she had reason to believe she would harm the U.S., don't judge her based on her lies. Judge her based on her actions. Because he was a spy, and so was she. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Let's give these competitors a round of applause.